my review of the G1 Climax 29 Day 3 show as it's the second night of Block A. Before we get into the block matches, though, Show Yumino being with John Moxley is a fantastic pairing in the works. I love the di the dynamic between the two. I think those two, if they keep it going, you could even realistically seeing them kind of creating their own little faction. Uh, with just kind of maybe Moxie just taking a lot of the, maybe the, not really other young lines, but kind of other, like, kind of like, mm, it's kind of hard to really explain exactly. Not really like a flock, but kind of that same kind of dichotomy of what the flock was. Uh, with just kind of a lot of undercardish guys, kind of bringing them under his wing. Kind of guys that have, like, that potential upbringing of being a potential star in the future, kind of taking them under their wing. Or under his wing, rather. As, uh, you know, I've rambled long enough about that than I wanted to. But here we go to the actual block matches. We have Lance Archer versus Bad Luck Fale. The first of the five. As they, uh, go to the outside early on. Jado hits Archer with a kendo stick that doesn't phase him. They go into the crowd. They brawl in the crowd. Archer has to make it back in the ring before the 20 count. And he does. Archer tries to walk the ropes. Fale distracts the referee, giving Jado time to hit him with a kendo stick again. As a suplex... From the middle rope, from Fale, grenade from Fale, gets a two count, pounce from Lance Archer, choke slam on Fale, who kicks out a two, crowd really good mind Lance Archer at that point, as uh, he locks in the iron claw, putting Fale's shoulders on the mat for the pin, and getting the win, uh, zero for one, wise with the uh, predictions, uh, with Fale beating Evil and Dallas, it makes sense for him to lose here, Lance Archer with four points, as well, Osprey vs. Sonata. Sucks, it lives, it breathes. A uh, label won't let Elevated be played for Will Osprey anymore. Really fit him well. Uh, just great opening sequence from both men. Ends with two trying to dropkick each other. Osprey tries to Paradise Lock Sonata, but simply just can't do it. Can't really figure it out. Sonata then shows him how it's done. Who immediately doesn't nip up out of it. Does well, Osprey. That was pretty crazy. Crowd popped huge for that. Sonata locks in the Paradise Lock using the bottom ropes. Drop kicks to a defenseless Will Osprey. Standing shooting star press from Osprey gets a two count double leap prog drop kick slingshot launch a spot from Sonata. Another crazy good sequence ends with a TKO from Sonata. At one point during it, Osprey went for the back handspring into a dragon sleeper, which is pretty innovative and crazy to think about. Never thought that would happen in a Actual matches, sit out power bomb from Will Osprey. Sonata kicks out of two. Shooting star press off the top rope. Sonata kick again kicks out of two. Quada kicks from Osprey. Goes for the Stormbreaker. Sonata counters into a Dragon Sleeper. Just awesome stuff there. Sp standing Spanish fly from Osprey. Sonata kicks out of two. Spinning axe kick from Osprey. Os cutter from Osprey. Follows up with a Stormbreaker to get to the win. Great match there. No surprise on it being great. These two can fucking go. But fuck, I can't say it enough. It was great stuff. A lot of innovative shit. Uh, just another great match for Will Ospreay on his kind of his resume into the uh, match of the year contendership. Not really match of the year contendership, but a wrestler of the year contendership rather. As uh, you know, the last Sonata was great too. And that was an awesome kind of first time matchup between those two to really kick it off like that. That was awesome. As uh, now we're you know we're one out of two predictions wise as Kazuchika Okada versus Zack Sabre Jr. Roll up of the bridge from Zack Sabre Jr. Okada kicks out of two. Another roll up from Zack Sabre Jr. Who uh, Okada again kicks out of it. Guillotine choke from Zack Sabre Jr. Okada counters with an over the shoulder neck break on the knee. Drop kick from Okada followed by the tombstone. Octopus stretch from Zack Sabre Jr. Drop kick from Okada goes for the rainmaker. Zack Sabre Jr. counters with a prawn hold. Okada kicks out of two. Discus Rainmaker from Okada followed up by the Rainmaker and he gets the win. Good match, couple of false finishes from Zack Sabre Jr. that kept it honest. Two out of three predictions wise, as we go to the co main event, Kota Ibushi versus Evil. They trade uh, forearm strikes to start it off. Big Sentad from Evil. Ibushi kicks out a two. Snap Power Slam into a middle rope moonsault. Evil kicks out a two. Top rope superplex from Evil. Layered from Evil. Ibushi kicks out. They trade forearm strikes. Ibushi with palm strikes. As uh, that floors Evil. As Evil catches the knee on the Kamigoi. Bumae from Ibushi. Evil kicks out a two. A headbutt to the chest. Followed by a discus lariat. Followed by a lariat. As uh, just awesome stuff. From evil that floors Ibushi. Darkness falls. Ibushi kicks out of two. Everything is evil. Evil gets the win. Ibushi starting it off 0-2 on 
as uh, of the G1 Climax, you know, giving him a perfect time to make the huge comeback and end up winning the whole thing. For, uh, well, not really winning the whole thing, but also just winning his block. As, uh, you know, that's happened before. You've seen it uh, many a times. You, Tanahashi would always do it. He'd, he'd start 0-2 in the G1, and he'd end up winning maybe the block or even winning the whole thing. Or at least being in towards the end where it's like, he, you know, it kind of matters. Maybe he finishes second or third. So it's really no, uh, you know, when uh, Kenny Omega won the G1 Glamax, he lost to Yoshihashi in his first, on the first match. So you really can't uh, can't look past anything as far as, you know, it, you know, it happens. And also, too, he's lost to, you know, uh, debuting Kenta in New Japan and now Evil. Which, Evil, I, you know, I predicted Ibushi getting the win, but it makes sense. Him starting off 0-2 if he ends up winning the whole thing. And uh, main event time, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Kenta. Shibata comes out before the match for commentary. Kenta slaps the shit out of Tanahashi. Both men trade form shots. Kenta with a DDT on the entrance aisle way as middle rope flipping sent on from Tanahashi. Kenta kicks out at two. Kenta just kicking the shit out of him at this point. Just a couple of leg kicks, a couple of kicks to the midsection in the chest. Snap power slam from Kenta. Springboard drop kick from Kenta. In the corner, hesitation drop kick by Kenta. As a dragon suit leg whip from Tanahashi, sling blade from Tanahashi, both men trading palm strikes, just beating the fuck out of each other. Discus Laird from Kenta, floors Tanahashi, sling blade from Tanahashi, Kenta kicks out, a high fly flow to a standing Kenta. Tanahashi follows up with another high fly of flow, but Kenta gets his knees up in time. PK kick from Kenta and a GTS by Kenta, he gets the win, holy fuck, a dream come true, and it's come to life here. In front of my very eyes. Glad that it went over better than the Kenta Bushi match. Really well done stuff. Fucking Kenta beating Hiroshi Tanahashi in a New Japan ring. A, a crazy reality we live in. As a post match, Ken uh, Tanahashi doesn't shake Kenta's hand. Fuck Noah to the end. Uh, what a great way to plant seeds for a rematch. As a uh, 2 out of 5 on the predictions wise for the night. Was hoping for at least 3 out of 5 on all the shows. But there goes that pipe dream. It only took three shows for that to end. Uh, some great stuff here on night three of the G1 Climax. Sanana and Osprey was great. Kenta and Tanahashi was something I've waited for for 15 years. So uh, really anything they would have done, I've been excited for and happy to see it. But uh, just seeing Kenta hitting a GTS or putting it, Tanahashi in a New Japan ring was just fucking crazy. Like just a crazy, realistic, a, a un unrealistic thing happening in a realistic time period is just crazy to see. But that will do it. For my review of night three of the G1 Climax here, of, uh, and I will catch you guys for my review of day four of the G1 Climax. Take care, everyone.